South Africa 100 years ago. A snapshot in time paints a picture of war, violence, death, concentration camps, famine and misery. The plight of thousands of destitute people urged a small group of volunteers to take action. The result? The establishment of the Afrikaanse Christelijke Vrouwenvereniging as a welfare organization in South Africa. In the South Africa of today, a century later, society is still grappling with the effects of phenomena such as poverty, domestic violence, child molestation, neglect, HIV AIDS, drug abuse and children of the street to name but a few. The assistance rendered by the RCFF is comprehensive and all-encompassing. Services are provided in the Western Cape, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape and certain towns in the Northwest Province. The RCFF assists more than 570 urban as well as rural communities, primarily to enable the members of these communities and families to improve their quality of life. The involuntary question remains, just who exactly is the RCFF? Who are these angels in human disguise who are always there to lend a helping hand? They are ordinary people dedicated, selfless women and men who volunteer their services free of charge. They offer their time, skills and sometimes even money to those in need. They are volunteers united by their service to the community. These volunteers are supported and assisted by the RCFFIA's dedicated professional staff who are always more than willing to walk that extra mile. They always say, a friend in need is a friend indeed. When I got at Missionville Primary School, uh, RCFFA has been there, has been helping us all the time. Vulnerable communities and families often lack the necessary skills and knowledge to effect change, improve, develop or overcome problems on their own. These communities need the RCFFIA's assistance to create an indispensable safety net which had in the past even saved the lives of vulnerable people. At the RCFFIA we believe that each community can improve and change its own fate provided the community is directly involved with this process. However, successful development can only be accomplished if it is done according to an integrated plan and if the various services rendered are interlinked. One of the challenges facing the RCFF is to strike a balance between actively helping communities to overcome the effects of poverty without nurturing a culture of dependence. Each of these interventions are interlinked and designed to alleviate destitution, enabling the child, family and community to break free from the cycle of poverty. The RCFF provides integrated services aimed at poverty alleviation to quite a number of communities. Let's take a look at examples of communities in Calfinia and Port Elizabeth. Calfinia is freezing in winter. Track suits, school uniforms and blankets are given to children in need, but only after a thorough assessment by a teacher and RCFFA worker has shown such assistance to be justifiable. Poverty-stricken children, for example, are provided with affordable tracksuits made by members of a disadvantaged community as part of an income-generating project. Nine unskilled women were trained in the art of needlework. Blankets are collected during the course of the year and issued to school children in winter.
Teachers at the school collaborate with the Arsia Fiafia to identify children whose parents are either both unemployed or receive such a low income that the family could be classified as destitute. The Arsia Fiafia has put in place a system in terms of which daily vouchers are issued to children in need. The voucher has to be shown in exchange for a meal. Each child has the responsibility to bring along a bowl or mug in which to have the soup or porridge of the day. The work done by the ladies of the Arsia Fiafia to feed children in need is a godsend. Or is it wheat bix provided by a donor? The prevalence of absenteeism has dropped considerably following the implementation of this project. The meal they are provided with here, actually for them, is the first meal of the day, or for many, even the only meal of the day. In that sense, we are greatly indebted to the Arsia Fiafia for their contribution. The daily preparation of food for underprivileged children is a labor of love. Despite having to deal with one's own problems, it is wonderful to be able to actively contribute towards alleviating the suffering of children in need by providing them with soup, bread or milk. Residents of the Arsia Fiafia's Sorgfleet home in Calfinia are also making their own contribution towards alleviating suffering in the community. The soup that is given to the children is being prepared right here in the home and everyone is eager to lend a helping hand. Clara also plays an important role in this feeding scheme. The delicious bread baked by her is sold to the residents of Calfinia. Funds accumulated in this way are used to purchase milk and the ingredients for the soup. In this way she's also earning an income to provide for her and her family's needs. The establishment of a vegetable garden is in its planning stage and the actual work on the garden will start soon. Success in life depends on skills. The Arsia Fiafia's Mr. Newman, a social worker in the execution of his duties, aims at empowering children by involving them with life skills programs. Our cameras caught up with them during the planning session for the establishment of a vegetable garden. For many families, Having a roof over one's head is often, quite literally, a struggle for life and death. Arsia Fiafia Algoa Park in Port Elizabeth provides affordable housing for low-income families. Social services are rendered free of charge where necessary. Group meetings are held where relevant topics, for example the submission of job applications, are discussed. Practical advice is given and members of the community taken through the actual steps of, for instance, planning low-cost meals. Residents are expected to come up with a counter-achievement. At Arsia Fiafia Algoa Park, opportunities for small-scale income-generating projects are deliberately created. Qualified hairdressers are paid to do the elderly people's hair. Another resident generates an income by cleaning the premises. Garbage removal is done by the residents themselves and even the children are involved. Opportunities for entrepreneurship are created and residents are allowed to contact businesses from their premises in a controlled manner. A study bursary is awarded annually by Arsia Fiafia Algoa Park to a resident teenager who wins a competition. The teenagers themselves determine the rules of the competition. In this way, the Arsia Fiafia nurtures a culture of winners. A bleak, hopeless existence is turned into a focused, structured life. Talking about a bleak, hopeless existence, children of the street are confronted daily with the harsh reality of a dysfunctional home. They often get involved with alcohol and drug abuse, addiction to glue, promiscuity, and as a consequence suffer from behavioral problems. Children of the street are able to find a safe haven in drop-in centers or homes for children of the street, where the Arsia Fiafia specializes in providing care for them. Examples of two such facilities run by the Arsia Fiafia are Kayamandi and Bright Lights in Port Elizabeth and Somerset West respectively. 
children of the street often have no choice but to break away from their families. Here I came because of my problem at my home, because of my stepfather. We were drinking so lot. The night from, from me and my pa and my two sisters, net so gelos and weggeloop. And to eat that nie lekker gaan by die huis nie, to besluit ek om straat toe te gaan. Buiten op die straat is het lekker om te leven nie, want die leven gaat baie zwaar op die straat en hulle gebruik dwalings op die straat en die slaap. Buiten met kaarboks en zet ek op hees so warm soos het hier sien. En so is baie lekker as slaapplek en sy moet nou was en sy moet sy kry koos op jou tyd en sy is baie lekker hier en sy kry genoeg liefde. Children are approached on the street and encouraged to make use of the Arsia Fiefiers facilities. Children of the street often meet with the wrong side of the law, and the South African Police Service sometimes calls on the Arsia Fiefier for assistance. The physical care of the children of the street arriving at the centres receives immediate attention. Their hair is cut, washed and disinfected. After that, it's time for a nice warm shower the first in many months for many of them. Each child is then issued with a clean set of clothes and ready to embark on the road to rehabilitation. Very often children of the street have lost all confidence in the people around them. It is therefore of the utmost importance that a relationship of trust be established with them, which will also form the basis of any further assistance rendered to them. Each task, even the preparation of food, is completed with the utmost regard for human dignity, compassion and respect. Basic skills have to be mastered. For example, having lunch at a neatly laid table. Children of the street have enormous handicaps to overcome in life, especially as far as scholastic education is concerned. One of the main priorities of the Arsia Fia Fia is to eliminate these handicaps as quickly and effectively as possible. This is accomplished through individual support and supervision with homework and lots of tender loving care. Possible donors are approached, for example, to allow these children to enroll with a computer training center. The training they receive here sparks their interest and at the same time develops their computer skills. Arsia Fiefia personnel work in close collaboration to plan strategies aimed at developing each child's strengths. This is accomplished through therapy and group sessions, the development of basic life skills, and by nurturing each child's natural talents. The families of the children of the street are also involved, as far as possible, inter alia by means of income generating projects. All sorts of useful articles are made and a market niche created to sell off these items. In this way, the parents of the children of the street are not only trained and equipped with specific skills, but the destitution of the families is also alleviated. Successful reintegration into society and realization of dreams are made possible with the help of the Arsia Fia Fia. One such success story is that of Ayanda. He entered the Arsia Fia Fia Center as a behaviorally problematic 13-year-old addict. It was a home for me. Yeah, it was a happy home. That's where I learned more things, life skills, communication skills, how to cope with people because we were different and we were in groups, groups of different people and we were equal, we were treated equally. So it was a home for me and it was a better place than the street. The dedicated efforts and support of the personnel eventually paid off. Today, Ayanda has reached his dream. He's currently enrolled as a second year student with the University of Port Elizabeth. The Arsia Fia Fia not only assisted him to obtain a study bursary, but also provides him with a monthly stipend to meet his needs. One could almost refer to the Arsia Fia Fia as his family. The Arsia Fia Fia actively encourages these children to dream and to work towards realizing their dreams. They become these children's family until they're able to be reunited with their real families.
each community has its own particular problems. This also holds true for the communities of farm workers. Working in orchards for long hours, seasonal work interspersed with extended periods of unemployment and vast distances that have to be travelled to the nearest resources and infrastructure form part of the reality faced by farm workers that often leads to the abuse of alcohol. Drankmisbruik op plase en nie net op plase nie in die hele distrik is baie beslis een van die heel grootste probleme. Um, en dit hou ook verband met elke ander probleem wat jy aan kan dink. The RCFFS work in these communities is focused on preventive programs in an attempt to address these problems. One such preventive program is presented on farms in the Cirrus district and deals with fetal alcohol syndrome or FAS in short, in particular. Voor vitale alcohol syndroom gaan daar rondom dat dit is een gebrek nee, of een syndroom waarin een kind lijkt wanneer die ma wat swanger is nee, te veel gedrink het tijdens swangerskap. Die naalstring nee, is dan as die ma swanger is, is dit die verbinding mos tussen die ma en die kindkie. Ons praat van die kindkie sy nog nie gebore is, nie praat ons daarvan as die ongebore babie nee. En alles wat ma drink en alles wat ma eet, gaan direct na die kind toe. Met ander woorde, dit word binnen die kind opgeneem. Ek wil jy ons moet voor voorbeeld dat in hierdie beker is wijn. Nou wat ek vir Jan gaan vraag is, hy moet nou hierdie wijn vat, en dan moet hy dit nou hier by die trechter ingooi, hier boe by tillasse, mond in. Dan wil ek jy, jy moet baie mooi gaan kyk hoe verspreid die kleersel dwars die die hele veet is. Maar dit is precies wat gebeur wanneer jy drink en jy is swanger. Hierdie alcohol verspreid dwars dier die hele fetese lyfie tot by die brein. Met ander woord, jy hulle sal sien as ons klaar is. Fast children with behavioral problems are given practical skills training. Their strengths are developed during work sessions that are presented in collaboration with the schools concerned. These sessions are followed up with therapeutic sessions and annual youth camps that further contribute towards the development of the children. Teenage group discussion sessions form another important component of the RCFFIA services. Young people actively participate in these sessions and they themselves determine the topics to be discussed, thus developing their skills. Farm workers near Robertson have joined hands with the RCFFIA and the owner of the farm to establish the Sonstral Play School. A member of the community supervised by the RCFFIA acts as educator and a specified daily program is followed. The children are stimulated intellectually, socially, emotionally and physically. The ability to take decisions and make the right choices forms the basis of any development program, even at this tender age. Special attention and guidance are given to fast children, tasks that require endless patience and compassion. A resource center which also incorporates a library was established with the help of the community. A second-hand clothes shop is also run from the premises of the resource center by volunteers from the local community. Income generating job creation is the single most important factor determining the success of any integrated development project. A subsistence gardening project for both men and women has been launched. Competitions serve as a special incentive. While the RCFFIA benefits from the wisdom and experience of local community leaders such as OPA October. Sewing articles such as clothes and blankets is not merely practiced as a hobby, but it is a necessary resource that provides in a family's needs. Farm workers are also trained in the art of wreath making and paper mache. Articles are made from products available in that particular area, which is why these projects don't cost the participants a cent, but still develop their skills. Ons het kenners ingekry om met die mense te praat en bijeenkomst te gehou oor alcohol, dwelms, oor kindermishandeling, oor kindermolestering, 
oor elke moendelike maatschappelijke probleem en hoe dit aansluit bij alcohol en welle misbruik. En daar vandaan het, het dit ontwikkel dat die mensen behoefte gehad het aan iets meer. Daar uit het de behoefte ontwikkel om met die tijd wat hulle nou het, iets te doen. Om hulle omgeving en hulle huise en, en hulle um, alledaagse leven mooier te maken. This community has truly seen the light and the negative effects of alcoholism and drug abuse have been reversed. The lives that they are living are once again filled with meaning, purpose and focused on the future. Meanwhile, another devastating monster has reared its ugly head. A reality that today is taking on pandemic proportions. A reality that infiltrates and destroys each and every aspect of the community and family life as we know it. The Arsia Fear Fear as a welfare organization plays an indispensable role in collaboration with the community to prepare people to face the challenges posed by the negative destructive effects of this pandemic. This is done by means of community education and guidance, empowerment to live with the effects of HIV AIDS, coping with the disease and trauma associated with it, eliminating discrimination against people living with AIDS, and preparing people to be able to handle the trauma when someone they love slowly pines away and eventually dies of the disease. Many grandmothers, such as Omar Elsie, necessarily have to take charge of the care of their grandchildren themselves, often because the primary caregivers have been wiped out by AIDS. I have three of them. The one goes to school and the other is the other. I have no money. I live with my pension. Before we sleep, we have to sleep in the battle. In the morning, Haar was ek hulle, haar smeer ek hulle met die wisseline en voete, haar maak ek skoon die oge en met die voete en met die wisseline smeer en alles. Haar maak ek groep ap, die ander ene wat ons dan het vier is, ons help aan mekaar. Dan trek ons aan vir hulle, want daar help ek, dan maak ek die lunch vir hulle, gaan hulle skoel toe. As hulle na die skoel, dan bleek ek saam met die klinkie. The Arsia Fear Fear supports these elderly people through the establishment of groups and service centers. This group of ours is called Sunbeam. It is under ACVV. I enjoyed the, I joined this group four years back. Here we are a group of old mamas. We do a lot of nice things. We need we sew blankets for our children and our grandchildren. We do a lot of things like exercises so that we won't get a arthritis and a other sickness. I enjoy coming here. Um, I am thanking Jesus for bringing me to this group. The Arsia Fear Fears Algoa Park Service Center assists these destitute women by preparing and delivering food for them. They also organize joint sports days. Very often the condition of the mother is so weak because of AIDS or related diseases that children pretty much have to take care of themselves because they don't have a grandmother who can look after them. These children are prematurely forced to assume the role of head of their family. Haas Das is an Arsia Fear Fear daycare center where preschool children are being looked after. The center not only provides care for preschool children but its facilities are also used to prepare soup and bread for the children of people living with AIDS. Young children hit the road at the crack of dawn to get their daily bowl of soup, porridge or bread from the Arsia Fear Fear Center, which is often their only food for the day. Visible signs of hunger are reflected in their innocent faces. Their future would have been bleak had it not been for this intervention by the Arsia Fear Fear. Once again, the community is actively involved and volunteers such as Sita are being trained by the Arsia Fear Fear to present programs or activities for the children. In this instance, something about moral values which is indispensable in the educational process of any child. 
In other instances, children are being taught and stimulated in a creative way. Their insight and life skills broadened and developed to conquer their respective phases of growth by the auxiliary social workers of the RCFFA. Meanwhile, volunteers from the community are preparing food for the children, bread and soup, just the right medicine against the cold and hunger pains. Home caregivers are trained and supported by the RCFFA to give care to bedridden AIDS sufferers. Not an easy task at all, because one is forced by necessity to say goodbye to each of them when the time comes. Social workers and home caregivers work in close collaboration to offer advice, support and comfort to parents as well as children. Vegetable gardens are planted and maintained since a healthy lifestyle and eating habits are of the utmost importance for people living with AIDS. The selling of vegetables also provides a necessary source of income for these families. Opportunities are created for women suffering from AIDS as well as those caring for bedridden AIDS sufferers to get together and escape even just for a short while from the harsh reality of the AIDS pandemic. One remarkable characteristic about these groups is that they are not judgmental at all. Skills are acquired. Clothing is made for the children and their strength regained by means of a nourishing cup of soup. Knowledge is the only weapon against this AIDS pandemic. Basic life skills have to be mastered even from a very early stage. Aspects such as AIDS are handled in a responsible manner. Which is why, if a friend of one of the children falls and hurts himself, they're taught to call the teacher immediately to come and dress the wound. Because contact with the blood coming from an open wound could lead to possible contamination. Creative programs about the prevention and handling of sexual molestation, the yes and no feeling, are presented to the children by social workers. Children are made aware of their rights during awareness programs. Guidance is given on the disclosure of dark secrets, as well as where to seek help. This message is conveyed further by the children themselves. Children of the De Grendel Daycare Center in Buertasach convey the important lessons they've learned to the residents of Hees Eisterplatt. When I was walking down the street, a stranger offered me a sweet. I turned around and shook my head. Is what I said. I saw a man quite tall and thin who asked if I would go with him. I turned around and shook my head. I don't know you. Is what I said. The cultivation of moral values, responsible decision making and knowledge about sexual aspects form an important part of youth AIDS prevention programs. Members of the community are involved with practical training sessions on relevant topics such as AIDS by means of street meetings. Members of the local community are trained by the RCFFA to reach out to others in turn. These are the realities of today, tomorrow and the future. A bleak picture, but one with a difference. There are still many people in the country who try to reach out to others in need. The Florence Nightingales of South Africa. Those who radiate warmth and light wherever they go. Those who are willing to make sacrifices for others, often under very difficult circumstances, without expecting anything back. We want to pay tribute to you today. To each volunteer, and every member of the personnel of the RCFFA, we want to say, you are the Afrikaans Christelijke Vrouwe Vereniging of South Africa. Together you are serving the community. Together you make a world of difference. <laughs>